Hey everybody, it's Tony from Fit Storybook and I am back in the kitchen with a familiar face, only this time we're cooking John Rose and we're gonna make a fast, easy, and healthy meal to teach you guys today. We're utilizing John's education in uh, culinary arts. He was a student and graduate here in Charlotte, North Carolina at Johnson and Wells University. And John, what are we gonna make today? Uh, today on the menu we have uh, coconut chicken lettuce wraps. Um, we're gonna do a, a red cabbage slaw with a lemon vinaigrette. Um, gonna be topped with the mango salsa. And then for a side item, we have zucchini and sweet potato chips, so. Great, sounds really tasty. So what inspired you to, um, I guess, learn how to make this dish? Um, well, um, the past couple years, I've been dedicated to trying to eat cleaner and healthier. Um, and I know, you know, the first few years in college was, uh, a lot of unhealthy meals, um, you know, in Johnson Wells, they teach you how to cook anything, so there's not necessarily a health plan. Um, but, you know, the past few years, as I've gotten older, I've realized that, you know, maybe I should start paying attention to my diet. Um, so today we have a clean, healthy meal. It is a little extensive on the prep time. Um, I would say about 40, 45 minutes. Um, but in the end, you know, you made a, a conscious decision on eating a healthy meal, so. Yeah, and a lot of people nowadays with society moving as fast as it is, mm -hmm. you know, people want uh, quick meals, but usually quick is mostly synonymous with um, unhealthy. So yeah. we're here to let you guys know that it's not always about, you know, how fast and, you know, the speed that it takes to make the meal, but, you know, the quality and time you spend uh, doing it. And it can be, you know, relaxing. Absolutely, absolutely. And every, all the ingredients we're using here today is fresh. Um, we don't have any processed food. Um, we're actually using a free range organic chicken thigh. Um, it is a little bit more expensive, expensive than your average uh, chicken thigh. However, um, I pay for quality over uh, the actual, um, for you know, the price, so. Yeah, so if you can, just go through the um, ingredients real quick. For our mango salsa, we have uh, fresh mangoes. We got a uh, red pepper, cilantro, red onion, um, lettuce wraps. Obviously, we have some romaine hearts. Um, that are chopped up, washed, cut fresh. Um, we have toasted sweetened coconut. Um, you can; those are pre-toasted. I toasted those last night. Um, toast those for about 10 minutes, and it actually brings out the flavor uh, in the coconut. Um, fresh lemons, um, fresh red cabbage, um, olive oil. Like I said, the free, the free-range organic chicken thigh, um, and some breadcrumbs. So. Um, we also have the sweet potato and zucchini chips also fresh as well. We're going to hand cut those um, and then bake those off. So, Do you have any, uh, this is kind of a just, you know, funny question, but do you have any uh, kind of unique, weird uh, kitchen rituals? Um, usually, if I'm kitchen, usually if I'm cooking by myself, um, I usually have a drink on my side and my music going. Um, but today I want to keep it a bit professional. Um, too early to drink right now. We're not going to throw any music in there yet. So um, maybe later on down the road, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll, maybe you'll have to be back to do some type of, uh, I guess, healthy alcoholic beverage yeah. segment. We'll have that in the works. But yeah, let's get to it. All right, sounds good. And we're going to actually take our chicken thighs and I'm going to um, beat them a little bit to make them thinner. Um, this speeds up the cooking process and also gives it and even cook on the uh, the chicken thighs. So what I'm gonna do is take my chicken thighs and I've already pre-cleaned uh, these up. Took some of the fat off. Like, like I said, this is organic free raised chicken thigh. <clears throat> if you're ever in a grocery store and you see the chicken breast or the chicken side thighs that are uh, excessively large, then um, something tells you so you probably shouldn't be eating that. Um, that's the chicken with the, uh, the extra additive steroids. So we're gonna go the organic route. I'm sure that woke the neighbors up. But uh, it's all right, it's time to get up anyway. So we're gonna do um, some salt and pepper on these thighs. Um, once we season them with the salt and pepper, we're gonna dredge in egg whites. Um, after the egg white, we have a bread crumb and toasted coconut mixture. Um, I also added some salt to this to kind of bring out those flavors a bit. Um, but yeah, it's pretty simple uh, seasonings. Nothing too crazy. Let's get to seasoning these chicken thighs. Um, <clears throat> another good question is, folks ask is, can you use chicken breast as opposed to thighs? Um, 
There's no rules in cooking. Uh, thighs is just my personal preference. Thighs are more juicy. I'm a guy that likes thighs, so I chose the thighs over the breasts. Um, you can use breasts. Now breasts tend to dry out a little bit quick, quicker than uh, the thighs, but hey, it's all up to you. So we're just gonna use some regular kosher salt. Kosher salt, excuse me. The uh, toasted peppercorn pepper. Right here is the uh, toasted coconut and breadcrumb mixture. Um, I added some kosher salt to uh, enhance the flavor, um, but that's about it, honestly. Um, and your toasted coconuts might be a little crunchy. Honestly, that's what I want. Um, and you can always just crunch them up. With the fork here, I'm gonna get this nice and mixed up and we're gonna start the dredging procedure. Chicken thigh, straight into the egg whites. And the egg white will give it a light and airy flavor. Um, not flavor, but uh, texture. A light and airy texture once you uh, bite into it and also keep the, uh, the breath, the thigh moist. We wanna start, anything that takes the longest, you wanna start first. And I know my protein, I wanted that to get it out of the way. Um, and obviously, honestly, it does take the longest. So we're gonna do it first. Um, pan fry these, uh, these chicken thighs, but honestly, bacon is the healthier route. So now we're gonna start on our uh, lemon vinaigrette. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take uh, fresh lemons, some olive oil, some Dijon mustard, um, and some dry herbs, and a dash of honey to make this simple vinaigrette. Uh, now you can use this uh, vinaigrette on dressings, you can use it um, on a slaw, um, you can use it on chicken to marinate. Um, today we're gonna use it on a red cabbage slaw. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some fresh cut lemons, um, they're already uh, rolled and um, halved. So I'm just gonna take my juice and just squeeze the hell out of it. So now what I'm gonna do is add um, a touch of honey. We have our, um, the base for our lemon vinaigrette. What we have in here lemon juice, um, some dried thyme leaves, some dry oregano, a dash of honey. Now I'm gonna add some uh, honey Dijon mustard. And what this does is an emulsifier, so to help keep our vinaigrette together. Um, so the lemon juice and the actual olive oil won't separate. I just added probably a half a table teaspoon to, uh, to that mixture. Like I said, we're making a small batch, so we don't need an excessive amount of dressing. Now here comes the tricky part with making a vinaigrette. Um, the trick is to have some speed to your uh, your mixing hand, and then you want to slowly add your uh, your extra virgin olive oil or whatever oil you choose to, uh, to make with. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start mixing this. This is just lemon juice and some seasonings. I'm going to slowly add this olive oil. You see a slow stream, and I'm just keep mixing. What people mess up is they add all the olive oil at once and then your, your uh, vinaigrette never actually settles um, and binds together. So, take a break, I'm gonna add a little bit more. I tend to stay away from the canola oil. Um, one, I feel like it has for dressings, I would say canola oil, um, I would stay away from. I would just use an extra virgin olive oil. It gives that that uh, enhanced flavor to it. So the purpose of our uh, vinaigrette was to, um, we're gonna saturate our red cabbage uh, in the vinaigrette. So basically we're making like a slaw. Um, the lemon is gonna complement the coconut chicken very nice on the taco. Um, you have that kind of citric acid from the other uh, lemons with the sweetness of the coconut. Guarantee you they're gonna tie it together. Um, it's gonna be a nice product. So we're gonna take our red cabbage. And what's gonna happen is the, the acid from the lemons are gonna cook the red cabbage. I say cook, but they're just gonna kind of soften up um, as you would a slaw or something like that. Now typically you can do this overnight. Um, Honestly, I like mine's a bit more fresh, so we're just gonna take this red cabbage, toss it in this uh, dressing we just made, the lemon vinaigrette, and then we're gonna just 
put this cabbage in the fridge and place it on hold until we're ready to uh, build our taco, which should be in just a moment. So now we're gonna um, assemble our mango salsa. This is very simple mango salsa. Um, it requires honestly four ingredients. We got fresh mangoes, fresh red pepper, red onion, and cilantro. Now notice you can see the knife cuts on the uh, the actual uh, product itself. Um, the knife cuts is what sets a chef apart from all of his competitors. Um, chefs judge each other on the knife cuts, so I made sure that I took my time to kind of cut these. Um, it also appeals to the eye, um, so when you look at the salsa, it's like, oh man, look at the look at that. Um, as a it just being rough chopped or whatnot. So we're gonna add our mangoes in here. And this is probably one of the freshest, juiciest mangoes I found in Charlotte at Walmart, believe it or not. Um, anytime you're picking out your product, you always wanna squeeze, feel, smell before you actually bring it home. I knew I picked a good one. Um, it's juicy, it's sweet. I don't have to add any seasonings to it, no sugar. It's already naturally sweet. So um, we're gonna add to this mango some red pepper. This is red bell pepper, sweet, not spicy. I'm gonna add some red onions, just to give it that color. Notice we have three different colors so far. Um, that's another big tip I uh, suggest to people is open, you know, broaden your colors a little bit when it comes to fruits and vegetables. Right now we have a yellow, red, uh, purple, if you would, and then we have some green cilantro. And I'm gonna go easy on the cilantro. Like I said, you can always start out with a small amount and always add on if you want to. So now we're just gonna give this a small toss. We have our mango sauce, so like I said, I'm not adding any salt, I'm not adding any pepper, I'm not adding any juices. Um, we're gonna leave it just like that. The sweetness of that mango, um, and also the, some of that acidity in there will kind of flavor itself. They're married together and it'll work out. So we're gonna set this in the fridge as well. All right, and our chicken just buzzed, so we're gonna take that out. All right, we're gonna place it right here to cool. Now we're gonna make our side dish. This is a very easy side dish. Um, we got some sweet potatoes and a zucchini. Um, what we're gonna do is make sweet potato and zucchini chips. Um, so basically what I've done with the sweet potato, I've cut it in half, I've peeled it. Uh, the zucchini, obviously I've broken it down, cut off the core. Um, and then cut it in half as well. So I'm gonna take my Johnson & Wales issued uh, peeler. Every Johnson & Wales grad graduate has one of these peelers right here. If you went to JWU, you know what this is right here. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my sweet potato and all I'm gonna do is um, make long kind of strokes. And honestly, you want your chips to be about that thin right there. Um, notice I didn't go the long uh, traditional circular chip. I want it to be a little fancy, I guess. Um, I'm going to go the vertical route and go the long way. So there's a few sweet potatoes. Now I'm going to do the zucchini next. The same process. Long strokes all the way down. Season these with salt and pepper. You can use your fresh cracked pepper that we used earlier. Um, and we're gonna lay these on a coated sheet pan. And now you want your uh, oven to be on a low 200, so I suggest 215 to 230. Um, and you're gonna keep those in there for about 45 minutes. Now they will shrivel up and they will dry out, but that's what you want. We're not, uh, these are not deep fried chips, they're baked. So we wanna keep them on a low heat so that actual moisture from each uh, fruit and vegetable can extract. So now I'm gonna use this same pan to bake our chips with. So what I'm gonna do is obviously remove our chicken breasts, our chicken thighs, excuse me. Um, I'm gonna lay these over here to cool, they're still cooling. I'm gonna wash this pan thoroughly and then we're gonna bake this, uh, our chips on this. All right, so we're gonna uh, assemble our chips on the pan. Uh, we have a lightly coated uh, pan with the olive oil spray. Um, we're just gonna hand Take our chips, lay them out on the pan as such. And 
and these will shrivel up folks um, but hey that's the point of chips so now we're gonna just add some light sprinkle of salt and then um, we're gonna put them in the oven now it's time to assemble our tacos we have our slaw made we have our lettuce cut for our wraps um, we have our mango salsa made and our chicken is cooked so we're going to uh, cut our coconut chicken Gonna take the first and honestly you can cut it however you like um, I'm gonna cut it so it can actually fit um, inside the lettuce wrap so I'm gonna just do a, a thin strip slice the sharper the knife the safer you're gonna be um, if I were to have a dull knife um, my brain would tell me to cut harder um, or you know apply more pressure to it um, and in that instance you can always slip and cut yourself um, when you have a sharp knife, um, it's easier to make cuts and you're uh, less strenuous on your actual body so you have um, less of a chance to actually slip and cut yourself. Alright, so now we're going to assemble our lettuce wraps. Um, we have our romaine hearts right here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two. And I'm going to uh, layer my chicken on the bottom of the, the lettuce bed first. Now you can use your hands if you want. Honestly, I'm about to use my hands. Hope y'all don't mind. As long as your hands are clean, these are your God-given tongs right here, so please feel free. So now I'm gonna take our red slaw and our lemon vinaigrette. Now this lemon vinaigrette is gonna uh, complement that coconut very nicely. So. Just a tad bit on top. And if you notice the color schematics again, we have the green uh, romaine lettuce hearts, the caramelized brown chicken, the red cabbage slaw, and then we're gonna hit it with our mango salsa. Clean up this plate a bit. So now we have our mango salsa. You see all those fresh colors in there? It's gonna go right on top. And I'm gonna use my hands again. Now we're gonna add our baked chips. All right, so it looks like we're all done. Talk a little bit about this beautiful masterpiece that you just uh, created. All right, so um, like I said, we have the uh, coconut chicken lettuce wraps. Uh, we have a red cabbage slaw with uh, mango salsa, and then we made some uh, zucchini and sweet potato chips. Yeah, and uh, you know, from a health standpoint, I know we were talking about earlier, it's pretty healthy. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the chips are baked. You know, talk about why it's so important. I mean, it looks great. I know it's going to taste great. You know, talk a little bit about you know why it's important to really think about you know health conscious you know meals. decisions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. So um, one of the things um, I've learned over the past three or four years is that my choices are going to affect my diet uh, daily. So um, and you know it's ways to uh, to go around things. Um, like I said, for the chips, for instance, um, these are baked chips as opposed to fried chips. Uh, we're using fresh veggies and fruits as opposed to uh, you know, actual potatoes or whatnot. So um, we use a sweet potato and we use a zucchini. Um, and it's just a straight baked on a low heat for about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, and then you get your chip aspect. Uh, with the taco, or with the lettuce wraps, excuse me, um, instead of a tortilla shell or a corn tortilla shell, we're using um, an actual romaine heart, <clears throat> romaine leaf, if you would. Um, with the uh, coconut chicken, we bake that as opposed to deep frying it or uh, salt, sauteing it on a, uh, a pan fry. Um, and then we have the fresh fruit sauce on top. So the mangoes, uh, the red peppers, didn't get any fresher than that, so. Right, and uh, I guess one of my last final questions from a budget standpoint, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people think that if you eat healthy, it's gonna cost a lot of money, mm -hmm. but that's not necessarily the case. I mean, just talk a little bit about how, you know, if you plan and budget right, 
you know, it, it won't be as expensive as you think it is. Yeah, absolutely. The most expensive thing on here, um, I did get the uh, free range organic chicken thighs, which was about, uh, I think I paid 507. Um, but as far as the fresh produce, I went to my fresh produce out in my grocery store. Uh, the romaine hearts were under two dollars. The mango was a dollar. Red onion was about sixty-eight cents. A red pepper, less than a dollar. Sweet potato, zucchini. All of these fresh items on this plate, honestly, um, was less than about fifteen bucks. Anytime you walk in your fresh produce um, aisle of your grocery store, um, you will tend to see that the prices are cheaper than what you think. So um, to make the lemon vinaigrette, I bought what four or five lemons for under two dollars. Um, the romaine lettuce you see on this plate was under two dollars, about a dollar sixty-eight, and I got three uh, romaine hearts with that. Um, the zucchini and um, sweet potatoes, both under a dollar. Um, you know, the most expensive thing on the plate is the organic chicken, um, and honestly, that was just a preference going the organic route. But from a fresh produce standpoint um, it actually was a penny saver so yeah that's good and I guess the experience I'm getting ready to have mm -hmm. eating this will definitely be priceless yeah so don't forget to like comment and subscribe